With the news that Fox broke last night about the true extent of China's coronavirus cover-up, we at the Ingram Angle felt obligated to tell you, well, we told you so. China's ambitions have never been a secret, yet over the years, our political, media, financial, and yes, our health experts have claimed it was in your best interest to cozy up to the Communist Party. Well, why? Well, so they could make a quick buck and flood our country with cheap imported goods, much to the detriment of American workers. Well, given how devastating this entire COVID-19 pandemic has proven to be, well, I thought it was important to remind you of those who ignored this global danger and dismissed it altogether. I give you the China threat deniers. First, I want to begin three decades ago when China was struggling mightily to emerge in the modern world. As the Wall Street Journal's Bob Davis wrote in 2018, it's difficult to remember how economically backward the country was in the early 1990s. Inflation hit 24 percent. In 1994, nearly 60% of the population lived on less than a buck 90 a day. But China had a plan. The nation's Communist Party leaders would woo Western political and economic elites in order to gain access to the powerful World Trade Organization. And one of their key targets was former President Bill Clinton. And their forays, well, they weren't subtle at all. During Clinton's 1996 re-election campaign, there were efforts, some successful, by senior government officials in China to funnel illicit foreign contributions into his coffers of his campaign. Well, just a few short years ago, and a years later, excuse me, Clinton was already trying to convince Americans that they needed to welcome China into the global trading community. America has a stake in China's success. In a China that has overcome the challenges it faces at home, a China that is integrated into the institutions that promote global norms. Oh, World Trade Organization. Well, one year after that, communist pep rally, well, and with China's position in the WTO secured, Clinton and Federal Reserve Chair Alan Greenspan held a triumphant Rose Garden event. As China's citizens experience economic gains, so will the American firms that trade in their expanding markets. China's progress towards prosperity and accession into the WTO will create new opportunities for American businesses and farmers. I believe that uh, Chairman Greenspan has established a pretty good record for knowing what is in America's economic interest. Oh, my God. I can't even listen to that. Well, to be fair, it wasn't just the Clinton administration. Just two years later, George W. Bush echoed his predecessor's naive sentiments. China is on a rising path, and America welcomes the emergence of a strong and peaceful and prosperous China. Yeah, how did that all work out for us? And then Obama, of course, echoed Bush, like literally. The United States welcomes the rise of a prosperous, peaceful, and stable China. We want China to do well. Well, did this... <laughs> Do, do they share notes or they pass notes along, computer to computer? It's crazy. So what did America get out of China's inclusion into the WTO? Well, we've lost millions and millions of manufacturing jobs. We saw our trade deficit balloon, intellectual property ripped off left and right. And meanwhile, China broke its promises to let foreign banks participate in their, you know, in all their business, which they undervalued their currency. We know all that. They got huge margins for years. And you'd think that would upset the titans of Wall Street, like former Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankenfein, right? China's rise, obviously, is important for China, but it's important for everybody in the world. I think China's leadership has proven its competence over the last couple of decades. Well, <laughs> at least Blankenfein defended Trump's tariffs last year, but that was after he had left his position at Goldman, where he had a financial interest in playing nice. Well, all these years later, after all the trade abuses, all that intellectual property theft, all the market manipulations, the provocations in the South China Sea, what they've continued to do to uh, terrorize Taiwan, the World, World uh, Health Organizations, you would think that the politicians in both parties, especially the ones who will be their party's standard bearers in 2020, that they'd you know, be very clear-eyed now about the China threat we face. China is going to eat our lunch 
Come on, man. I mean, I, you know, they're not bad folks, folks, but guess what? They're not a they're, they're not, not, they're competition for us. China's not our problem if we invest and remember who we are. <laughs> no, they're not our problem at all. Look around, Joe. Look at what's happened to America over the last four weeks. We lost all of our job gains since the last, of course, uh, recession. Now, it's time for China to enter the forefront of the American political conversation. And if you see someone denying what China has done to America, our workers, our people, now our health, with the way they handled this virus, ask yourself, what's in it for them? You can usually find the answer pretty quickly.